In this video, we're going to be talking about Dolly Parton. From the most humble beginnings to personal tragedy, being targeted and attacked for her looks and beliefs, and even having threats on her life from the Ku Klux Klan. Dolly has endured it all, and despite everything she's faced, she's come out the other side an extremely talented, intelligent and generous lady who remains down to earth and an inspiration for us all. Whether or not you're a fan of country music, you can't help but be a fan of Dolly Parton, and you can't help but be inspired by her journey. Humble Beginnings Today, Dolly Parton is worth an estimated $500 million. But this is worlds apart from her upbringing. Born in 1946 in a one-room cabin in Locust Ridge, Tennessee, Dolly was the fourth eldest of 12 children. She and her family lived on very little, with the siblings sharing a bed and having to wash in a nearby river. Her father was a logger, unable to read or write, whilst her mother was a preacher's daughter. Together, the early days for Dolly, as described by the lady herself, were wonderful but tough. In a touching 1976 interview, Dolly recounted how the first time she saw a flushing toilet was when she was 12 years old. Dolly doesn't begrudge her humble upbringing, however. In fact, in interviews since, she has said that her parents taught her about being financially savvy and prudent at a young age. She also told People magazine, No matter how much money I make, I'll always count my blessings quicker and more often than I count my money. And that mindset goes a long way to explaining her generosity and giving nature. For example, in 2017, when the Smoky Mountains caught fire, Dolly donated over $3 million to help all of her neighbours rebuild. The silver lining to her humble upbringing is that it's provided lots of inspiration for her songwriting, and one of the most potent examples is from one of her first big hits, Coat of Many Colours. The song tells the story of a young girl, picked upon by her friends at school because her coat has been sewn together by her poor mother, made from donated rags of different colours. Dolly makes it clear in the song that although they may be low on money, the family were rich with love. So much was made of her humble start that when Dolly eventually went on to make her fortune, she recreated her old family home by buying the original property and getting her brother Bobby to restore it to how it was when they were growing up. She told the Nate Berker show that she wanted the house to be functional and spent a couple of million dollars making it look like only $50 was spent. Music was always part of her life. Having been raised in a large family also had some benefits and music was a large part of Dolly's life from the very beginning. Her mother's side of the family were her maternal grandfather, a Pentecostal preacher, introduced Dolly and her siblings to gospel, country and bluegrass. In an interview in the mid-2000s, Dolly spoke of everyone being committed to playing an instrument in the family. There was always something there to play and learn. The early start obviously paid off. By the time Dolly was 10, she was already playing, singing and writing her own music. The day after she graduated high school, she left home and moved to Nashville, Tennessee, the home of country music, where she was determined to make a name for herself. It wasn't all easy, however. Her record label saw her more as a pop talent thanks to her looks and voice, but eventually, when they took the chance on the young singer-songwriter, success would quickly follow. Her first song, Dumb Blonde, made it to number 24 in the charts, and her 1967 debut album, Hello, I'm Dolly, showed the execs in the music world that country had a new star. I will always love you. For those born after the 60s, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the title song to the Bodyguard movie, as performed by Whitney Houston, was an original score for the film. However, that wasn't the case. It was actually a Dolly Parton song with an even better story that went with it. In 1967, Porter Wagoner handpicked Dolly to appear on his road show and television program. Wagoner was already famous at the time, but his previous co-star that appeared alongside him on his TV shows, Norma Jean, left the show as she was getting ready to start a family. Wagoner was convinced Dolly Parton would be the perfect replacement, but the transition wasn't particularly easy, especially at the beginning, as fans of Norma Jean would continue to call out her name during the first few shows. Over time, however, Dolly was able to win over the audience, and their fame grew and grew to the extent that the show was top of the television ratings and pulled in a weekly audience of 3.5 million viewers. In 1974, however, Dolly decided that the relationship had run its natural course. 
To this day, Dolly and Porter Wagoner's duets are considered some of the best in country music history, but Parton wanted to pursue a solo career, whereas Wagner was intent on keeping her on the show. Dolly did what Dolly does best. She wrote a song, that song would be I Will Always Love You. She performed this in private to Wagner, who went on to say that that's the prettiest song I've ever heard. You can go provided I get to produce it. The song was so popular that even Elvis's manager, Colonel Tom Parker, tried to buy the rights to the song and approached Dolly for it, but despite the pressure, Dolly flat out refused. I can't do that. Something in my heart says don't do that. And I didn't do it. True to the song, she left the professional relationship with Porter Wagner, and even though it turned acrimonious for some time, with Wagner suing Dolly for breach of contract, they eventually patched things up and Dolly was at Porter's bedside when he passed in 2007. What's also rarely reported is the fact that when Porter Wagner went through bad times and had to sell the rights to his own songs, Dolly bought them and gave the rights back to him and his family. That's just one of many examples that show the kind-spirited, beautiful nature of Dolly Parton. A children's author. When Dolly got married to Carl Thomas Dean in 1966, the two wanted to become parents and according to a Guardian interview in 2009, dreamt of what their kids may look like. However, as the years rolled on and professional commitments grew, Dolly's child-rearing years faded away. A maternal type to many though, this didn't stop Dolly from being the mother figure to her family, which she looked after as soon as her career blossomed, bringing many of her younger siblings to live with her in Nashville. While she may not have her own children, she has gone on to be a children's author, producing several published children's books, writing music for younger listeners, and building her charity, Imagination Library, which has donated more than 100 million free books to children and libraries. What an incredibly selfless and generous act. Dollywood Theme Park Opened in the late 80s, Dolly's theme park, Dollywood, is designed for families to go and take a break with award-winning food, exciting rides and stunning performances. You'll never catch Dolly on the rides though. She suffers from motion sickness where even school bus rides as a youngster would make her feel nauseous. The theme park has appeared on many different TV shows and travel guides and is one of the most famous parks in America, however, it hasn't gone without its share of controversy. There have been many different lawsuits over the last few years, with the most damaging cases involving victims who claim to have suffered spinal and neck paralysis. The most recent lawsuit was brought after a mother of two claimed to have suffered partial paralysis after going on the River Rush water coaster at the park. A few years earlier, Dolly had to settle out of court for a similar case that involved a lady breaking her jaw and suffering spinal and neck injuries whilst exiting the swing rides. The theme park has also caused trouble for Dolly in other ways too. In fact, when Dolly held a special day for her LGBT fans, the local chapter of the KKK took offence and protested against the event, even going so far as to issue threats against Dolly's life. Dolly refused to back down and her vehement support for gay rights has seen her become an icon and an inspiration for many around the world. She lost a Dolly Parton lookalike competition. Dolly has a huge drag queen following. It's not uncommon to see drag queens dress up as her, but it's not just drag queens who emulate her style. She's big everywhere, from country to popular culture, and her legion of fans come in all shapes and sizes, so when Dolly had the opportunity to enter a Dolly Parton lookalike contest, you'd think that she'd be a winner, no matter what the competition, right? Well, that wasn't quite the case. As she told ABC News, at a Halloween contest years ago on Santa Monica Boulevard, where all the guys were dressed up like me, I just over-exaggerated my look and went in and just walked up on stage. I didn't win. I didn't even come close, I don't think. Whilst we can certainly see the funny side of this particular incident, there's been more serious incidents too, and at times her looks and unique style have come under attack. One of the most notable examples of this was when Barbara Walters criticised her for her fashion choices. Asking her to stand up for the camera, Barbara stated in a condescending manner, You don't have to look like this. 
You're very beautiful. You don't have to wear the blonde wigs. You don't have to wear the extreme clothes, right? She then went on to ask Dolly. But do you ever feel that you're a joke? That people make fun of you? The thing is, people tend to underestimate Dolly Parton. Perhaps because of her looks, they don't appreciate just how clever and savvy she is. And Dolly's response to Barbara Walters in this clip exemplifies this. To those barbs, Dolly's response was priceless. She said, I am sure of myself as a person. I'm sure of my talent. And to me, and I'm sure of, of my love and for life and that sort of thing, I'm very content. I like the kind of person that I am. So I can afford to piddle around and do diddle around with makeups and clothes and stuff because I am secure with uh, myself. Dolly is certainly nobody's victim. With that said, Dolly hasn't always been so comfortable in her own skin. Famously, in the early 80s, she contemplated ending her own life after struggling to come to terms with the guilt for betraying her husband following an affair of the heart. Fortunately, she was safe from going any further with her plan by her dog, Popeye. When Popeye came running upstairs, the sound of her paws running up the stairs snapped Dolly back into reality, and we're all grateful she didn't go through with something that could never be reversed. She has two Hollywood stars. The singer-songwriter was also a big commercial movie hit in the late 70s and throughout the 80s. Earlier films such as Dumb Blonde, Steel Magnolias and 9 to 5 propelled the star into a different stratosphere. Acclaimed for being able to take to acting like a duck to water, Dolly was often cast against strong female leads where she would steal the show with quick one-liners. Part of the appeal, however, was that Dolly could also score the soundtrack. 9 to 5 still to this day is one of her biggest hits. Not everything went according to plan, though. In 1984, the film Rhinestone absolutely tanked at the box office, making the movie last only four weeks in the charts. Co-star Sylvester Stallone regretted making the film, but not Dolly, who, in her autobiography, My Life and Other Unfinished Business, stated that she counts Rhinestone's soundtrack as some of her best work. In 2019, Dolly was awarded her second Hollywood star. The first came in 1984, but this award is special. Dolly is the first woman this century to get two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and only the second one overall, the first being Diana Ross. She's a social media icon. Despite Parton's well-earned status as a true living legend, she's the first to tell you that she's not done yet. And despite being in her 70s, early 70s mind you, but 70s nonetheless, she's not ready to rest on her laurels. If there's one thing that Dolly has taken to without any problem, it's social media. Her posts are as funny and witty as you'd come to expect from the singer-songwriter. She has millions of followers across all the main social networks, but what makes Dolly really stand out is her take on the world and how she can make fun of herself and never take anything too seriously. In January 2020, she went viral with her Dolly Parton challenge four photos to capture four different social media channels, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Tinder. People all around the world took on the challenge with some hilarious reactions. The hashtag Dolly Parton Challenge got over half a million mentions. Dolly can now add social influencer to her long list of other achievements. What are your favorite Dolly Parton facts? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and remember, click on that subscribe button to show your support and be informed when we release new videos.